folks, my name is Matthew Peterson, a trainer at Pragmatic Works. And as you saw in that intro video, we do everything here from on-demand learning, private training, hackathons, virtual mentoring, and we have this YouTube channel as well. So if it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe so you can be up to date of all the videos we put out, normally three to, to four videos a week of free learning. Uh, and if you like the video, make sure to like at the end as well. Here's what I'm gonna to bring to you in my ninth episode of the Power Platform series I started in this year of 2022. And I wanna go back and revisit Power Apps and talk about display forms. So you're about to see the application I've been building throughout this series, and if you wanna build it along with me, go to the playlist and start at episode one. But in this video, I'm gonna discuss display forms and how we can use them. Typically, display forms are used for displaying one record and seeing what details you want about it. I'm going to use it a little bit differently. I'm going to display a record, but it's going to be all about let's confirm the record we just created and allow our users to see those details and then confirm, yes, I like the record I made or no, I need to go back and edit one of those pieces of the form itself. So without any further ado, let's head on over and take a look at the application I have. So right now, I currently have a form and I'm just doing a record creation on this form. It then can be viewable right here in my gallery. I have it sorted in descending order, but what I want to now do is do something a little bit different. I want them, after they hit save, to be taken to a new screen that has the record details. So I've already made my screen here, and I'm going to add in what's called a display form. So in my insert ribbon, I'm going to head over to forms and choose a display form. And at this point, it says you need to connect it to data. So I'm going to come on over to my data source drop down hook it into the inspection table because that's where my record is going to be accessed from. And I'm just going to put in a few fields. I'm not going to add all of them in just to save time in our video here. So I'm going to put in here like the comments. I'll put in who the inspector was. I'll do the park ID and I'll do the, the rating here. So I'm just going to add these in. When you have forms, whether it's an edit or display form or a form you're doing for new records, you can easily drag and drop your fields. So if I want inspector to show up first, I can show the inspector first, then the comments, et cetera, et cetera. Also within display forms and regular forms, based on your data type, you can choose how, what control type to show on that data card value. So right now it's view text, which means we'll just see the number rating I gave it. But if I want it to be that star system of a graphical representation, I can change this over to a view rating. And so that's what I'm gonna do right now. The form looks decent enough to start with. So I'll close out of here. And I am going to make the fill color here to be white so it's a little bit easier to see on the screen. So now, how do I use a display form? Well, the first thing is it has to be hooked to a data source, which we have over here. It's hooked up into inspection. But then I have to utilize the property called item. And the item property is used to say, hey, what record do you want me to display? Or if it's an edit form, what record do you want to edit? So for the item here, I'm going to say, I really want to just use the record that was submitted last. And that record submission was done on a separate form. So I'm going to say, reference that form, and then let's bring back in the last submission. So the code that gets that accomplished here is we come on up into our item property on our form. I reference the form, which in my case was called form2 on my first screen, dot, and then last submit. So I want to show the last submission. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna come over here to SCR main. I'm gonna hit play. But ooh, before I hit play, remember I've gotta change some things around. So currently my save button just submits the record. And in a prior video we talked about on forms you have an on success property saying, what do you want to do if the record was successfully submitted? Right now in prior videos I just said, give them a notification and put the form back into new mode. Well, now I want them to navigate to that other screen so that they can see that record creation. So you might just think, well, all right, let's just add in a navigation action. So on success, I'm gonna do a semicolon. I'm also gonna say, let's navigate out. So let's navigate over to my screen, which I've called SCR confirm. So now I'm gonna hit play. I'm gonna make a quick record here. I'm gonna put in a random comment. I'll hit save. And notice what this says. It says no item to display. Common troubleshoot that I see when setting these up for other customers. They say, why isn't it showing me? I said, you know, take the form's last submission and show it here. Well, the reason it doesn't is because on that on success, I put the form back into new mode. And when you do that, it wipes out from the memory the last submission record. 
So I'm going to have to come over here and fix that. So I wanted to show you that troubleshoot first before we actually do the full thing. So let me come back on up to my form two and the on success. And I'm going to remove my new form action. So I'm going to remove here my new form action. And now I'm going to have it go back to navigate to SCR screen confirm. And so let me come on over here. I got rid of some extra characters. So navigate is what I want. I got to get rid of that parentheses there. So let me put it back in navigate SCR confirm. Here we go. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to go to Thunderbolt Park. Here we go. Oh, I need to put my form back into new mode here. Actually, I guess I don't have any for Thunderbolt Park today. Uh, oh, because I have a filter on just showing my user record, something I did in another video. So Black Creek Park and Trail. Here again, I'll give it a five star rating. I'm going to put in random comments, random comments. I'll hit save. And here we go. Here's my five star rating. I see the, in the inspector, random comments, park ID is three. So that is the first tip, the first piece of the puzzle, which is we want to show the last record submission. Now you could technically stop there and you could put a icon on there that navigates them back to the home screen, whatever you want. Or we could give our users the ability to say, no, that's not really the record I wanted to do. What I really want to do is edit that record now because I made a mistake in it. So let's see, let's see how we can do that. So what I'm going to do next on this exact same screen, I'm first going to put in a button that says, all right, a confirm button. So something like a button, I'll just uh, do confirm. And then if they click the confirm button, what do I need to occur? Well, what I need to occur is I want them to navigate back to my first screen and I want that form to go back into new mode. So to get that executed, I'm going to go to the buttons on select property where it currently says false. And I'm going to say, all right, navigate back to the first screen. And when we get there, I want my form to go back into new mode so I can make another record. So form two. So now that I have that here, let's test it out. I'll hit play. Yes, I like my record. I'll hit confirm. Here we go. It wiped out everything. We're back into new mode so I can do a one star rating. I'll put in non-random comments here. Stupid joke. I'll hit save. And there we go. Non-random comments. One, I've got my confirm button. Cool. We're halfway there. The next thing that I want to do is give my users the ability to edit the record. So in order to do that, I have a few different options. But what I want to do is make a separate form for editing of records uh, that aren't going to have any default values in it. My form on the first screen has default values. I can use conditional logic to say if in edit mode, uh, don't use the default value, use the original records value. If not, use my uh, default of like the user email for inspector or today's date for date. But to make this simpler, I'm just going to make a, a, and to make this a quicker video here for you, I'm just going to put a new form right here on this screen. Technically, you could put it on a different screen. It's really up to you. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm now going to come over here and I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to put in a, actually, you know what? I'll make a new screen here. So let me come over here. I'm going to come on up. I'm going to make a new screen, blank screen. This is going to be, I'm going to call it SCR edit last record like so. And then on this screen, I'll change the, uh, the color here real quick again. So I'll change this back to that antique white. I'm going to come in, insert a form. It's going to be a edit form in this scenario. So I'm going to do insert and edit form. And then for my data source, it's going to be inspection again. I'll add in those fields that I had on that same form, which I believe was comments. I had the inspector. I had the park ID. I think I had the rating as well. So I'll add those in, give it a second. And I'm going to change that rating back into an edit rating. All right. So, and I'm going to change the fill color here so it's easier for you all to see on your side into white. So now, what do I want to happen? So once they confirm, they have the ability to confirm, go right back to the original screen. But what if they want to edit this record? Well, I'm going to put in a button that's going to allow them to do this. What does this button need to do? Well, first, I need to give it a better name for the text. I'm going to say edit record. And then when they click on this button, I want them to be navigated 
to my screen that has the edit form on it. So I called mine SCR edit last record, just like so. Now let's play this. Actually, let's go to the, the, the main screen here. Actually, I'm going to have to come here. Let me hit pl uh, play on here. I'm going to confirm my last record, which will put my form back into new mode. All right, comments, one, save it. I don't like it, so I want to edit it. Oh, we're getting the same problem here again. It says no item to display. And this is because whether using an edit form or a display form, you have to use that item property to tell us what record do we want to show. So let's figure that out here. So I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to say, all right, in this form, if we get to this form, which is currently in edit mode, I need the item to be the last submission from my original screen. So on mine, it was form two dot last submit. And as you can see, here we go. There is that record itself. But let's really make sure this is working. So I'm going to come back to SCR confirm. I'm going to hit play. I am going to confirm that record. I'm going to create another brand, brand new one. And I'll do a four star rating. I'll hit save. All right, I don't like my record. I'm confirming, not confirming, I don't like it. I'm gonna hit edit record and boom, it takes me to that record and now I have the ability to edit that record. So what would be the last thing that I would need to do on here? Well, I would need to have a button on here. So I'll insert a button, but we'll come on down and then I'm gonna do something like I'll say, um, change record. And then once we click on change record, what do I need it to do? I need it to submit this form, which in my case, this form is now called form one. I would definitely rename these forms. The more forms, the more controls you have, definitely use renaming conventions uh, to do that. We have a Power Apps cheat sheet on Pragmatic Works where we have a link to how we use uh, our naming convention. So definitely check that out. So I would submit the form, then I would do semicolon. I want to navigate back to my SCR main. And we have to remember when we get back there, what do we want that form to do? See our confirm button on our, on our first screen we set up today. On our confirm, we said navigate and put the form back into new mode. Well, we got to do the same thing here. We have to say navigate us back and put that form, which was uh, form two, we're going to put that back into new mode, just like so. So I'm going to hit play. I'll make a change here. So I'll do a rating of two. And I'll say brand new one again. I'll click on change the record. Bingo. In this case, there's my rating of two. I just don't have my comments showing up here. My form is back into new mode. And this is one way of how you can use display forms to show that record. Is that really what you meant to do? If not, I'm going to take you to another form where you can edit that record and then make those changes to it. So here again, the last thing I would technically do, I'm not going to do in this video, but you might be saying, well, what if they say I want to edit the record uh, when they get to the screen and then they realize, oh, actually, you know what? I don't want to edit the record. Well, then you would put another button here that says don't need to edit, whatever, navigate them back to the first screen and then put that form back into new mode. So hopefully you got an idea of one way of how to use a display form for confirmation of records. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our videos. I'm going to be doing more throughout this year. Uh, we've been doing Power Apps, Power Automate, uh, probably going to you know, do a few more Power BI videos, Power Automate as well, and we're going to be sprinkling in some Power Virtual Agents towards the end once we get our full solution developed. So again, thanks for joining me today and I hope to see you in the next one.